Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 988. Hey, if you want to download the Sourcebook 987 to 988, click on the link below the video. Hey, the other night I caught the end of uh, Antiques Road Show, and someone had bought a Calder painting, a really cool painting in 1970, and they paid 2,000 bucks. And this was the year 2012, and they appraised it at 55,000. And the people on the show were like, "Wow, what an amazing return!" And I immediately thought, "Well," what is the return? So let's look at how to figure out what your average yearly return would be when you buy a work of art or anything and have some end value. Well we can figure out the difference that's 42 years. So we can simply do a formula like this. We take the end amount divide by the begin and then we have to take the 40 the 42nd root of that, and the way you do that in Excel is you use the exponent, and then you say 1 divided by 42. When you take an exponent 1 divided by some number, it means take the, that nth root, and then we have to subtract 1. Now, when you create a formula like this, you got to be careful. The order of operations would automatically calculate this first. And I don't want that to calculate first. I actually need to calculate both of these divisions. So I'm going to put parentheses around this, and then also around this. Now we'll have no problem, because it'll calculate the two divisions. And then parentheses are first, right? So it calculates everything inside the parentheses. Then it goes to exponents. And then no more multiplying and dividing. It goes to minus. So when we enter this, there is our return. Now we can test this, right? Because we know what we started at and how many, 42 year, how many years there are, or periods. So if that's the average rate, we simply do our future value formula. Hey, that's where we started times a big fat multiple, 1 plus our average uh, yearly return, caret 42. So we take 1 plus the rate, raise it to the number of periods, and multiply that times the uh, starting amount. And we get 55,000. So we got that right. There's also the rate function. Rate function, if we know the NPER, that's the number of periods. By the way. There, there's there's rate, there's PMT, future value, present value. There's a bunch of financial functions. They all have similar arguments. So NPR is the number of periods. Usually, at least I do a lot of you know payments and present value and future values. And so rate is usually one of the arguments you're entering in. But here, it's a function, right? All of these ones are the ones we're usually solving for. But in this case, we have those, and we want to get rate. So comma, the PMT, we do not have it. So we simply type a comma to skip over our present value. Now we have to be careful here. When we bought the painting, $2,000 went out of our pocket. So we have to put this cash flow as an outflow by putting a negative comma, and then the future value is a positive. It comes back into our pocket. The type, well, we don't have a type here because it's not a, a, an annuity. And then the guess, we don't need that. And there it is. So next time you're watching the Antiques Roadshow and you want to see what the return is on any of those items, you just whip out a few little calculations like this or this groovy little rate function. Be sure to test it. All right, we'll see you next trick.